In the shadows of the Cold War era, a chilling concept consumed the minds of Americans. The fear of brainwashing. It was a time of rising political tensions and covert operations. But what if I told you that the CIA believed their enemies had unlocked a dark secret to control minds? Meet MKUltra, a top-secret program shrouded in mystery and secrecy. Its mission? To unlock the secrets of behavior modification and gain the upper hand in the battle for the human mind. At the conclusion of the Korean War, a fascinating account was published by the New York Times, recounting how American soldiers returning home might have been transformed by communist manipulators. The story gained immense popularity with claims that certain troops confessed to war crimes, while others embraced the communist ideology and refused to return. This fear of mental manipulation, also known as brain warfare, both terrified and captivated the American public during a time of escalating political tensions in the early years of the Cold War. Convinced that the Soviet Union had uncovered a method or drug to control minds, the CIA initiated a highly classified program known as MKUltra. The primary objective of MKUltra was to conduct covert experiments centered around altering human behavior. Human subjects were submitted to a range of techniques, including electroshock therapy, hypnosis, polygraphs, radiation, and a concoction of drugs, elixirs, and chemicals, all aimed at testing their efficiency in controlling the human mind. Amidst the belief that all of these experiments held potential, one drug became the obsession of MKUltra during the 1950s and 60s. Thus began the alleged race to manipulate the human mind, unintentionally sparked by the discovery of a particular drug. In 1938, Albert Hoffman, a researcher employed by the Swiss chemical company Zandos, stumbled by chance upon a psychoactive hallucinogenic that would leave an indelible mark on history. Initially, Hoffman's intention was to synthesize a chemical compound that could stimulate the respiratory and circulatory systems through the combination of lysergic acid and other molecules. On his 25th attempt, he inadvertently synthesized lysergic acid diethylamide, or LSD-25. Although this new finding held no immediate relevance to his research, Hoffman detected something intriguing about this compound. The animals exposed to it exhibited peculiar behaviors and levels of excitement. Not giving it much thought, Hoffman set aside his accidental discovery for five years until the results of his tests once again sparked his curiosity, compelling him to recreate it in his laboratory. During the height of the Second World War in 1943, while in the final stages of synthesizing LSD, Hoffman unintentionally absorbed some of the substance. Soon, restlessness, dizziness, and an intensely heightened imagination overcame him, prompting him to abandon his work for the day and return home. The following day, he returned to his laboratory, consumed by an intense curiosity to unravel the cause of his previous day's encounter. After carefully eliminating all potential contaminants, he reached the conclusion that he must have inadvertently ingested LSD, experiencing effects akin to those observed in the lab animals five years prior. To confirm his hypothesis, Hoffman recognized that there was only one course of action, a self-experiment. Thus, on April 19, 1943, Albert Hoffman embarked on the inaugural voyage of an acid trip an unprecedented undertaking in human history. Approximately 40 minutes after ingesting the substance, Hoffman began to experience dizziness, anxiety, visual distortions, and a strange inclination to laughter. As he paddled his bicycle homeward, he observed an undulating and distorted world as if beheld through a curved mirror. Eventually reaching the safety of his house, he succumbed to the embrace of his sofa. 
the psychedelic effects of LSD entranced him, inducing a whirlwind of hallucinations characterized by ceaselessness and animated motion fueled by an internal restlessness. Overwhelmed with fear, Hoffman believed his demise was imminent. However, the effects gradually subsided, the horrors giving way to a sense of profound fortune and gratitude, amplified by an unprecedented kaleidoscope of colors and shapes that danced behind his closed eyelids. Everything gleamed and sparkled in a renewed light. The world appeared as if reborn, he wrote the following day. All my senses vibrated with an extraordinary sensitivity that persisted throughout the day. Today, April 19th is commemorated by recreational LSD enthusiasts as Bicycle Day, an homage to Hoffman's vivid journey home. Thanks to Hoffman's experiences, the terms acid and psychedelic have become eternally intertwined. The term psychedelic stems from the fusion of two Greek words, psyche, meaning mind, and delos, meaning to reveal. Clinically, a psychedelic experience refers to a category of compounds that induce a state of mind manifestation in users, propelling them on a transformative odyssey that often unveils unique insights and emotions typically concealed. This sensation can persist for up to 12 hours and often assumes a remarkably dramatic form. Many individuals report a distorted perception of time, an altered sense of self, and profound shifts in emotions and sensations. Some even encounter synesthesia, a phenomenon in which their senses intertwine, adding an additional dimension to their perception of the world, such as tasting music, seeing sounds, and hearing colors. Embarking on an acid trip entails delving into the depths of one's own psyche, offering profound insights to those who partake. Yet, it also possesses the potential to unsettle, leading the mind down uncharted paths that can yield horrific consequences. Scientists theorize that LSD impacts the receptors in the brain responsible for serotonin regulation, a crucial chemical that facilitates communication between nerve cells and plays a vital role in governing mood, happiness, and even sexual desire. Although no research has linked LSD to mind control, reports emerged in the late 1940s suggesting that the Soviets vigorously pursued the production of LSD, convinced it held the key to manipulating an individual's mind. Consequently, upon discovering that Hoffman had concocted his consciousness-altering substance, the U.S. government approached his employer, Sandoz, and invested a substantial sum of $240,000 to secure the global supply. This even marked the genesis of what investigative journalist Stephen Kinzer later deemed the most extensive quest in history for methods of manipulating the mind. The CIA, alongside MKUltra, initiated the distribution of LSD to various institutions such as hospitals, clinics and prisons, urging them to conduct research endeavors involving patients and prisoners. Their objective was to comprehend the nature of LSD, observe individuals' reactions and explore its potential as a tool for exerting control over the mind. Whitey Bulger, a prisoner who volunteered for the program in exchange for a reduced sentence, was informed that the drug was being tested as a remedy for schizophrenia. As a participant in the experiment, he received daily administrations of LSD for over a year. It was later revealed to him that he had unwittingly become a guinea pig in a study aimed at investigating the long-term effects of LSD and whether it had the ability to induce mental deterioration. Bulger reported his experience recounting how he was closely monitored by physicians who persistently posed leading questions such as, would you ever take someone's life? These interrogations gradually pushed him to the edge of madness. The experiments conducted on human subjects under MKUltra represented the utmost extreme trials sanctioned by any US agency and, according to Bulger, the repercussions were profound. He endured persistent auditory and visual hallucinations, mortifying nightmares filled with violence, and anxiety so crippling that sleep evaded him. 
the CIA and MKUltra believed that LSD possessed the potential to shatter an individual's mind, presenting an opportunity to reprogram it, either to extricate victims from alleged Soviet mind assaults or, more likely, to transform their adversaries into enemies of themselves. In the midst of the Cold War, the race for mind control was deemed a paramount victory affording the CIA and MKUltra a virtual license to kill bestowed by the US government. They wielded the authority to requisition individuals from all corners of the nation and beyond, subjecting them to various forms of abuse, even if it proved fatal. Enemy agents captured in Europe and East Asia became subjected to a variety of tests involving electroshock therapy, sensory deprivation and extreme temperature conditions. These endeavors were not aimed at comprehending the human mind, but rather to obliterate it entirely, paving the way for reconstruction from the very foundation. Among the most infamous experiments of that era was Operation Midnight Climax. Government employed prostitutes enticed unsuspecting men to CIA safe houses where LSD experiments were conducted. These men were secretly administered LSD by the prostitutes while CIA officials observed their mental unraveling behind a two-way mirror. Concurrently, the agents themselves partook in drug consumption and engaged in unscrupulous acts. George White, the program's leader, would later confess. I was, of course, a mere foot soldier and errant knight, but I served diligently in the vineyards because it was an absolute thrill. Where else could a patriotic American lad lie, kill, cheat, steal, deceive, violate and plunder with the approval and blessing of the highest authority? Ultimately, after subjecting numerous individuals to dosages, MKUltra arrived at the conclusion that LSD's unpredictable nature rendered it unsuitable for effective mind control. As a result, the program was terminated following an investigation into its unorthodox and unethical practices. Throughout its course, the program supposedly involved over 150 experiments, causing numerous victims and irreversibly ruining lives. The true extent remains shrouded in mystery, as the majority of MKUltra's records were destroyed. Ironically, the drug that the CIA hoped would unlock the door to mind control inadvertently liberated individuals' consciousness, igniting a rebellion against the government and everything the CIA represented. This movement centered around protesting the Vietnam War, as well as advocating for equal rights and environmental consciousness. As the use of LSD proliferated, it became an unofficial emblem of this movement, heralded as a means for individuals to forge a connection with nature and catalyze positive societal transformations. The movement's pressure is widely acknowledged for instigating the creation of the Clean Air Act in 1963, the United States' inaugural and most influential environmental legislation aimed at regulating emissions. Additionally, it played a pivotal role in the conception of the inaugural Earth Day in 1970, which propelled environmental concerns to the forefront of youth culture. Regrettably, while the movement generated significant positive changes, its excessive use of acid coupled with the US government's war on drugs divided the nation and eventually impeded the constructive exploration of these hallucinogens. Consequently, the US Food and Drug Administration, deeming LSD one of the most hazardous drugs ever developed, criminalized its possession in 1968. Nevertheless, there is no denying that the counterculture movement of that era would not have prevailed without it, cementing LSD as one of the most influential substances in human history. Over 80 years since its discovery, LSD remains shrouded in mystery. The substance's illegality in numerous countries poses challenges for scientists conducting comprehensive research to ascertain its long-term effects. 
Nonetheless, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies has commenced basic safety studies, and in 2014, researchers embarked on the first scientific studies involving human subjects in decades. While the capacity of acid to control minds remains debatable, researchers have hinted at the potential of psychedelics to aid smoking cessation, assist individuals grappling with post-traumatic stress disorder, combat depression, and even help terminally ill patients cope with their fear of death. Cary Grant, a prominent actor in the 1950s, consumed over a hundred doses of LSD, asserting that it allowed him to connect with his subconscious and break free from self-imposed constraints. Similarly, Sid Barrett, a founding member of Pink Floyd, experienced waves of inspiration while using LSD, propelling the band to fame in the late 1960s. Yet, the same creative forces that unleashed Barrett's imagination also led him down a path of self-destruction as excessive drug use gradually eroded his sanity, leaving him a mere shadow of his former self. Albert Hoffman described his psychedelic experiences as imbuing him with feelings of ecstatic love and unity with all creatures in the universe. Nevertheless, he did not shy away from acknowledging that LSD's unpredictability constituted its major hazard. The euphoric state and positive expectations of a trip could swiftly give way to profound depression if the setting was not adequately controlled and vigilantly supervised. From being a tool for mind control to emerging as a symbol of freedom, LSD has experienced yet another transformation in public perception, with some individuals associated with Silicon Valley advocating microdosing to enhance creativity. In this new resurgence of psychedelics in the age of technology, one cannot help but contemplate Hoffman's words upon his discovery of the drug. I did not choose LSD, LSD found and called me. There are, however, other ways to tap into altered states of consciousness to enhance creativity, problem-solving and intuition. In the world of competitions, Helen Hansel was a figure of legend. Her name was synonymous with the term contest queen, thanks to her remarkable winning streak. From seven luxurious trips to the City of Lights, Paris to boats and houses, her winnings were nothing short of extraordinary. Her strategy was straightforward yet mysterious. She would throw her hat into any sweepstake, any contest that she came across, and uncannily she would emerge victorious. How was it possible? When questioned, she described a captivating yet intriguing concept known as the Silva Technique. But that's a subject for another video.